Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Looking at a comment we got from one of the viewers. Now I must say, I'm excited that you guys are asking questions about the law and the obedience to the scripture. And I was already planning a class to talk about the law and what it actually is. You know, there's a lot of misunderstandings on what biblical rules are versus what the covenant is or the law. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the covenant. We're going to discuss what it is and how it applies to our life in these modern days. So this comment actually came right on time. You know, I saw it late last night and I said, well, I'm going to do a class on this. The question he has is, can we eat unclean meats? Talking about pork or shellfish and other things that are considered dietary laws. Well, the answer may surprise you. So stay tuned. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and in holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So the Most High decided, he decided to make a covenant with the nation of Israel, our fathers, and us after our fathers, because we're entering into their labors according to John chapter 4. So we can't, we can't take this covenant for granted. Because he didn't have to choose us and also we enter into this covenant voluntarily. Okay, so first of all, let's come over here to Leviticus chapter 11. This is where we start to hear about the dietary laws. You see down there in verse 7 that is actually talking about pork. And it says, Though he divideth the hoof, and be not cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean. And this is one thing that should be noted about these dietary laws, is they give us descriptions on which animals we can eat. Do they have a split toe like a cow or a sheep? Or do they have one toe like a horse? And do they chew the cud like a deer does, where he comes out into the field and swallows as much grass as he can, knowing that later on he's going to regurgitate that grass and chew it properly? You learn over in the book of Barnabas that these are all symbols. Symbols of the different kinds of people in the world. There are people in the world who act like swine. And when you look at this verse, you'll see what Barnabas was talking about. The cloven footage. He refers to people who understand the difference between right and wrong. A person who is not cloven footed doesn't know the difference between right and wrong. So they're liable to do anything. And chewing a cud, that's symbolic of remembering our father. So a person that doesn't chew the cud doesn't remember who he is. And this is actually a good example of how these are actually pointing to the kind of people that we are to deal with. Because a swine kind of person is a person who, although they are going through life, not considering the laws at all, that cloven footed part, when they get in trouble, they cry out to the Father and ask Him for help. But once they receive that help, they don't remember from which that help comes from. These people are not chewing the cud. So check out the book of Barnabas to understand these dietary laws that are talked about over here in Leviticus. The point that I want to make is that this is in the book of Leviticus and not in the covenant. Later on in the video, we're going to tell you the difference between Bible rules and the covenant. All Bible rules are not part of the covenant. And that's important to note because not all Bible rules carry the death penalty. In other words, eating pork does not carry the death penalty. It may give you high blood pressure, but you don't have to worry about an angel coming down to smite you like as if you were to break the rules of the covenant. So, let's find out what this covenant is. Come back to the covenant, Jacob. You spoiled, you used to be royal. The judges, they cover their faces. You fell in the hands of the wicked. Will you ever ask for forgiveness? It's such a tragedy, isn't it? We wasn't meant to be slaves. Now we mentally slaves. We got a slumber, Jerusalem. 144, suiting up. 12 tribes, suiting up. Really, what harm can they do to us? Except kill a body my soul is in. And that's all they can do, but I'm noticing. Faith was the cure to my hopelessness. So I picked up my cross and I'm toting it. Demons on me, here we go again. They just doing their job, I take no offense. I'm just gonna plead the blood and cast them out to the abyss. I can't believe we alive. I would keep letting us slide. Now, before we get off of the subject of clean and unclean animals, 
you really should be expected to do your own study and get your own understanding because like you said it's not a part of the covenant it's not a part of the law and it is that law that's going to get us through this tribulation so to me that carries a lot more weight but while we're on the subject of meat let me show you one thing that's even more important than those dietary laws we find over in Leviticus chapter 11. We look over here and it mentions meat in Leviticus chapter 17 where it's telling us that we are forbidden for eating blood. This is extremely important. In fact, even Paul, who we know was very lenient as far as the law was concerned, he even mentions it in Acts chapter 21 and 25 that we are to eat no blood at all. So this verse actually is talking about his commandments to the Gentiles you see there. So those who claim that the Messiah did away with the law should still consider this commandment that we are forbidden to eat blood. Now where Paul is getting this from is over here in the book of Genesis in chapter 9. Now it should be noted in verse 3 that our father says all living things are for our food. This includes plants and animals. And it says all living things. And when you look at the Septuagint translation, it even mentions reptiles. And so this should be a very interesting verse to talk about when we're discussing dietary laws that the scripture says that we can eat snakes and alligators and such. But notice down here in verse 4, even though it says you can eat anything in the world, it says you can't eat blood because it contains the life of the animal and we are forbidden from eating the life of the animal which is the blood of that animal and this is repeated again in the book of Jubilees down in chapter 6 you see right there in verse 6 it says all beasts and winged fowl are given to us for our food just like all of the plants and herbs but then notice in verse 7 just like in Genesis it says we can eat all flesh but we can't eat the blood that's in the flesh well notice how immediately after verse 7 it starts talking about killing people so this is equating eating blood with murder? This is serious, guys. So check out this video that we made here right quick. I believe in giving credit where credit's due. So we have to give the channel Nick Vanderlane credit for the understanding of the covenant given to uh, Noah back there that we're not supposed to eat blood. Okay. You know, after watching this video, I came to the understanding that I was eating blood. And it was a life-changing experience because we've done our due diligence not to eat blood again, right? And so I just wanted to show you guys how I cook meat. Now, I'm not in full agreement with um, Brother Nick over there um, saying that you have to boil everything, have to get boiled it twice. Yeah. yeah. But we did a study on the meat, right? right. And how heat or boiling water cooks meat. Right. And turns out you really only have to get it up to about 165 degrees to get all the blood out. And so that's how we do it, guys. We put it in a pot right here. Okay. Now, we are a little bit primitive here on the old hill, be the homestead, but let me show you how we do it. We, we put the meat in a pot like this, and we raise up the temperature. See, there's a lot of meat in here, and I have my thermometer stuck off in the meat so that I can see when it actually reaches the desired temperature between 165 uh, around 165. Now you start to notice all of that stuff coming out. That's actually the blood coming out of the meat. Right? And so what we do after this, we get up to 165. Um, depending on how thick the meat is, is how long we have to let it, you know, simmer or, I don't know, cook right there at 165 because it's actually cooking the meat. And then after that, we take it out. Um, the scripture tells you to dip it out. So we use something like this and pull it out. Now what I've gathered from this, see all that oil in the pot? That oil is creating a barrier between the water, which has the blood in it, and the meat. So that's why he tells us to dip it out. And when we do that, we dip it out, and then we uh, then we season it. Yeah. And then we fry it, right? right to to um, get it closer to what we're used to. Yeah. To get the sear it. You notice when you do this, you get into this temperature. People say it dries the meat out. It still has the oil in the meat. But you notice when the oil comes out, there's no blood in it. It's just clear liquid. That's because the temperature, uh, 165 degrees, 160, 165 degrees, gets the blood out, but it doesn't get the yeah. oil out. Come back to the covenant, Jacob. Uh, come back to the covenant. Uh. In times, 
Okay, you took it too far. Come back to the covenant, Jacob. You spoiled, you used to be royal. The judges, they cover their faces. You fell in the hands of the wicked. Will you ever ask for forgiveness? It's such a tragedy, isn't it? Don't you remember them days? Back when the tribes were solid and none of the brothers had feminine ways. You had a temple in place. Back then you was Levitical. Why did you give it away? Just for a whip in the chain. We wasn't meant to be slaves. Your brother is still at your head. He never forgot what you did. He wishes the blessing was his. Look in your rear view mirror. You see them red and blue lights. Sir, where you had it tonight? Keep calm. Hands on the wheel. This could be the end of your life. Gun in your face. Never read you your rights. What is this? Come back to the covenant, Jacob. Uh. Come back to the covenant, Jacob. We wasn't meant to be slaves. We were supposed to be free. All right, for this part of the class, we want to bring Stacy in. Shalom. Because we're going to look in the third testament of the Bible. And we're going to drop all the way down to chapter 16. Mm -hmm. This is part of the section four, which is all about the law and love of God and fellow men. Right. This chapter is called the divine law, the law of God. Mm -hmm. And then so you see those several sections in there. We're not going to hit all of those verses. Right. Just jump down and hit the highlights. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's jump down to page 157. Okay. All right. So we're down here in chapter 16. Um, let's go down through and let's, let's pull out some highlights. Okay. Well, let's start right there. Let's take a peek at verse 1 right there, if you would. Read that thing. There are many men who judge my doctrine out of its time. That is because their material nature does not allow them to see the external aspect of my lessons. Yeah, materialism is blocking people from understanding the law mm -hmm. right it yeah. makes them think that it's in conflict or you know it's in disagreement to what we have i believe what it boils down to uh, uh, we've mentioned the word it mentions the word materialism here but what i believe it boils down to is our comfort right you mm -hmm. know because one of the first things we do when we get on this path is we're introduced to the angel of punishment and mm -hmm. he removes all unnecessary stuff they call it the purge yeah well, a lot of people ain't not going to go through this purge. And so they're like, hey, I don't want nothing to do with the law because she doesn't want to lose her stuff. Yeah, people don't, though we love the word simplicity, we don't want simple lives. Yeah, and so we, like I said, don't want to lose our stuff. Right. You see right there in verse 2, it says that the law is unchanging. Right, mm-hmm. Even from the time of Moses through the time of the Messiah until this very present, it still holds the same um Value is still uh, is summed, uh, summarized by some of the same words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it says, behold, the unmovable stone of my law. The words don't change. They do not. It turns out they're actually universal laws. They're not, they don't just apply down here on this rock. These right. same laws, you know, they, they celebrate Passover in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, in number three, it says, I have poured my light forth over all men, revealing to them the only existing truth. But you see how each man and each people feel, thinks, believes, and interprets it differently. And that is telling us, I believe, that he's given us a simple law, but for some reason, we as people always have to come in and complicate it and interpret it different than what he um, is saying. And later on in this chapter, he tells us that he allows us to do this. Really? Yeah. If, okay. Mm-hmm. That he allows us to interpret it different, differently. Wrong? Does he allow us to interpret it wrong? What verse is that? I think he allows man to do what he man wills to do. Well, let's go down because I was going to bring that out, or maybe I already did in when we talk about the delusion. What what verse is that? If you I think mind? it's going to be number eight. I'm skipping ahead. Uh, we may come back. Uh, let me read. If I agree to allow you to apply my doctrine to your lives according to your own will rather than mine. Truly, I tell you that you would never recover from your spiritual stagnation. Never allowing your spirit is unfolding its development and its perfection. Okay, go, go to number seven. I think it's in number seven. Oh, 
The moral and scientific world that surrounds you has been the work of men, of material ideas, who have sought the material improvement of humanity, and I have permitted them to do their work, to take it to its limits, to know the results and gather their fruits, so that in them they can gather the light of experience. In that light, my justice will be manifest, and in that justice will be present my law, which is love mm -hmm. so what now what you saying and saying now that he has permitted um us to have um certain morals the morals that the morals and scientific world that surrounds you have been the work of men and material ideas who have sought the material improvement of humanity and i have permitted them to do their work you don't, you don't think that's, that's what he's saying. To take it to its limits, to know the results and gather their fruits so that in them they can gather the light of experience. It seems to be saying yeah, that. So I, yeah, I believe that's, yeah, that right there, it's, it's allowing them to do what they want to do. Right. Yeah, so, so you say you can see what the fruits are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I agree. That, now, that also comes along, see, I thought you were going to talk about um, the strong delusion. Okay. And the strong delusion is... Well, if we come to the King James Version and look for the word delusion, we see there's two times that the word delusion is mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, the first time we see in First Thessalonians chapter 2, you see right there in verse 8 where it's talking about the restrainer or the man of perdition and all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, look down here in verse 10 where it starts talking about this delusion. If you were to read that. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Righteousness comes from the law. Right. That's, that's what right. So these people are rejecting the law. Mm -hmm. And then we look what happens to them when they reject the law. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Yeah. So there's them fruits. Right. Yeah. So you you want to reject the law. Mm -hmm. So you're allowed to fall into this strong delusion. So you see what happens to you at the end. Right. Mm-hmm. That they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're taking pleasure in rejecting the law. Mm -hmm. Well, you see what happens to them. And we want to make sure we um, point this out, that it's not the father who is uh, um, the the word perpetrator of this strong delusion. It's we ourselves who are initiating this. Is that what you And we fall, we fall into, because we know the father does not... Uh, come along and want to wreak havoc on nobody. We ourselves started, and is, is, does that make sense? Well, let's go over here to Isaiah chapter sixty-six. This is where Paul is getting this from. He's getting it from Isaiah mm -hmm. down here in verse four. Um, if you would go ahead and read that. I also would choose their delusions and would bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spoke, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and choose that in which I delighted not. Well, I'm going to stand in opposition to what you say. Okay. You know, and to all of those who say that, you know, God is not the author of confusion. He might not create confusion, but, you know, he's going to choose your confusion. <laughs> Let yeah. Me say I will choose their, their delusion. Yeah, I think that's what I was saying, that he might not be the... Um, Creator of the, the creator, lie. yeah, the but creator you, of it. You, we do, we you prefer the yeah. lie. Let you have. Right, oh, okay. we yeah. we initiate it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, good point. You see, right there, where first five says the majority have departed from the illuminated path. Right. Most people don't keep the law anymore. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But they say they believe that fulfilling the divine law implies sacrifices, denial, and superhuman effort, preferring to create for themselves religions and sects whose rules and practices are easier for them to fulfill. Right. So mm -hmm. they play in church. Yeah. That's what it's saying. They, they basically rejected the law and created this environment to where they feel comfortable and they call it church. Mm -hmm. They're playing church. Mm -hmm. You see right here in verse 10, it's saying that these religions were necessary. Yeah. You can imagine, okay, so you've rejected the law. So now you need religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody can help me out with this, but you know, I'm starting to wonder if this what you know is meant symbolically when it says that the moon won't shine and the sun won't shine. Mm -hmm. Those point to false religions. The moon is basically um, the Easter, and the sun is Christmas. Mm -hmm. These are the religions, and so when it tells me that they won't shine anymore, I'm starting to wonder. You know, 
Mm-hmm. All of these false doctrines start to go away. Mm-hmm. But anyway, y'all help me with that in the comment section. Well, one of the things I want to mention is remember when um, our people wanted a king. Yeah. Um, and Samuel told them that, you know, you really don't want a king because this is what's going to happen. Yeah. But we insisted that we have a king. We insisted that our uh, God, you know, have feet and legs and arms, somebody that we can see. Our master, yeah. our support, our provider. Yeah, just like the heathens. Uh, we were not satisfied with our God, with, yeah. you know, our father. And so um, the father just gave them what they wanted. Even though the promises of Jacob is that you know you follow and do what I tell you to do and I will give you these right. provisions mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but again they rejected the, the law mm-hmm. so now they don't have these provisions mm-hmm. and so now we're forced to depend on the government but you have to understand that government has a new world order agenda right yeah, so it may not be in our best interest um, I did want to bring out this verse right here I think it's extremely important verse 11 if you okay. would read that this is under the commandment of the love of God in the spiritualist work it is your God who speaks to you my voice is the law. What? Repeat that again. My voice is the law. One more time. My voice is the law. <laughs> Today you are hearing it anew without necessity of inscribing it up on a rock or sending my incarnate word among you. It is my divine voice that reaches your spirit and reveals to it the beginning of an era in which man will be justified, reconciled with his creator, and purified as it is written. So, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and, and this, this doesn't should be new to anybody. You know, it takes a lot of effort to reject this kind of stuff, especially when you come over to John chapter one, mm-hmm. which says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word was God. Right. Right. The word, and it just needs to be repeated three times too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because this is exactly what it's saying over there. Is that the law is his voice mm-hmm. so what we understand from this verse is that his law was actually made manifest mm-hmm. this is what they mean when they said the word became a human mm-hmm. it wasn't all of the Bible that became a human mm-hmm. you know the Messiah was not necessarily the reincarnation of Psalms 23 mm-hmm. you know he wasn't a walking Psalms 23 mm-hmm. he, he, he was the walking law is what he was, but I don't expect you to to, to lay. I know I've shown you a few verses here, but I got more. That's the thing about the scripture is so consistent across all books. That's mm-hmm. how you know which books are real and which ones aren't. The 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 word of God is flawless, consistent, concise, precise. Yeah, you know, a lot of people. While you're looking for that, coach, a lot of people are very doubtful of the Third Testament, but you know. I have not seen nothing in it that is contrary to what every other scripture, including the forgotten and lost books and missing books and all this, these other books, pseudographica and all those, these other books. I have not seen anything that uh, is false about it. Contradictory. Contradictory. Well, you have False some translation that. errors and stuff like there that. There are translation but, you know, errors, you can but get past those. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, just that's why you need discernment. You know. Yes. But anyway, look at this verse right here. It don't take much discernment for verse twenty-four when it says, "Now this law is the Son of God." Mm-hmm. Very plain, flat out in your face. The law is the Messiah. The Messiah was the law made flesh. He was the law walking around as a human being. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and we find in the other verse that the law is the voice of God. I think the only reason people have a uh, problem with the law is because they don't want to do the law. Yeah, you know, well, and so right. now all of you have, if you don't want to do something, of course you're going to find a problem with it. You know, if I don't want to um, keep my floors clean, the first thing I'm going to say is I don't have adequate I don't have an adequate blow. Oh, okay, yeah. uh, I don't, you know. So you're always going to find a problem with something that you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. You see right there in verse 14, he says, My eternal law has always spoken to you of that love. So yeah. he's speaking through us from the law. And if we're rejecting the law, we're rejecting the, the Father. Mm-hmm. We're rejecting the Creator. This is why so many people, um, I don't really like when they do this because it brings a lot of confusion. When they say that we have made an idol out of Jesus. Mm. Yeah, we made an idol out of him. We rejected the law because 
the law is the, is the true Messiah. Mm -hmm. But we so we've rejected the true Messiah, and we put our faith in this false Messiah. This you know figment of our own imagination who we say that did away with the law so this new whatever you want to call it that we think we're worshiping is actually the opposite who of who we think we're worshiping because like you said the messiah is the law made flesh but in this new religion their messiah did away with the law and got rid of it destroyed it so their jesus destroyed our messiah in essence is what they're saying their Messiah killed our Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I take a little bit of thought, but that's what they're doing. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. When you say that he did away with the law, well, the law is him. He did away with himself. Yeah, their Messiah is um, new and modern. Right, our yeah. Messiah is old and uh, classic. Well, he's and more than modern. He's watered down. He lets them do whatever they want to do. He, he, you know, he got this heart on his chest that says he loves everybody. You know, even the heathen and every, you know, which he, the, our Father does. But you got to understand, we're in a time period where he's trying to save humanity, and his focus is on those who are working to do the right thing. The, the other people that's going into the spirit world, they're gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. they, they, nobody needs to worry about them right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs to focus on, you know, those few chosen few that's going to survive, else all humanity will be lost. Yeah. So we're not saying the Messiah don't love you if you don't right. keep the law. Absolutely not. You know, we're not saying that. But well, I am saying that if you reject the law, you are rejecting the Messiah. Yeah, because every society, every community, every all people have rules, all people have laws, and all people have instructions. But this new Messiah that we have created that I refer to as modern has no rules and those rules that he does have uh, you're allowed to you know you go ahead you know I ain't gonna say nothing it'll be all right do whatever. Yeah, do whatever. while the rest of us are being chastised day and right even down to our thoughts think a bad thought and get whacked you know yeah you see right there in verse 17 it says he never granted us a religion yeah the mm -hmm. father is not that's why I don't like people telling me I'm a religious person I'm not a religious person Mm -hmm. I don't believe in religion. The only religion I have is obedience to the Bible. Right. He yeah. says, um, I never granted you a religion, but a law. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're supposed to be following the laws of those who are playing church. They, they do more than playing. They, they, they check you. What kind of games y'all playing? Because, uh, anyway, look at verse 19. All the religions will disappear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, we can do the math on when they go away. All you got to do is understand a time, time, and half a time prophecy over in Daniel chapter twelve. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a section right there, starting verse twenty, on failure to obey the divine commandments. So, what happens to us when we disobey, disobey the law? Well, we know that the divine law is love. All the it's laws, universal law. Yeah. Right. All the um, the rules of uh, that the Moses were given. When you boil them down to to it, it's about love. All the uh, the rules and the the sayings of the Messiah. When you boil that down to it, it was about love too. And the, and throughout this here chapter, the Father is talking about how He wants us to uh, love each other. Mm -hmm. um, that's important. That's what's important. Yeah, yeah, but what should be brought out, you know, for those who you know have sleep or whatever. The love is universal law, sure, but the first law is to love Father, to Absolutely. love Him, Absolutely. right? And then you have to ask yourself, how do you love Him if you are obedient, if you are disobedient to Him? Mm -hmm. and what what child can speak up and say, Mama, Mama, I love you, I love you, when he's disobedient, he won't do what you tell him to do. He's always doing opposite of what you tell him to do. You're disobedient. You're disrespectful of of my law. Um, of my instructions that I give to this child, and uh, you rejecting sit around you are, and you reject. You yeah, you're rejecting. You're rebellious of you, them. Hold on. You, not only are you rejecting what you you have to offer them, mm -hmm. they've decided what you have to offer them is not adequate enough. Mm -hmm. So they've gone off to the neighbor mm -hmm. and is now enjoying the, the neighbor's fruits, mm -hmm. even coming back to your house and flaunting this stuff in in their face, coming back with you know. Air Jordan's on and stuff when you was telling them no, you need to be humble and you're modest in your dress. They decided they didn't want to be humble and modest in their dress, so they went to the neighbor who happened, you know. Yeah, I'm just always going back to how our people uh, rejected the father 
And basically we, because we're the, those same spirits, we rejected the Father, some of us, you know. Some, I some exactly have, at one point. I, some, I, I just some become obedient on. to the law you yeah. know, when the last trumpet started blowing in 2015. Before that, I didn't even know what the law was. Yeah, we rejected the Father, um, and we're still doing the same thing daily. We still want another king. We still yeah. want to be like the heathens. Yeah, well, and the thing is, he's coming. You know, they call him the lawless one or the antichrist or whatever you want, false prophet. That king that we want, you know, it's just that he's wearing new world order symbols, Egyptian symbols. Look at verse 24. It says, today I have taken a whip to punish those who disrespect my law. I have allowed them to feel the consequences of their own faults so that they may realize that my law is inflexible and unchangeable. See, this is, this is you know, points to that verse. I, I wish I could find it real quick. It says how he doesn't punish us mm -hmm. for our sins. That's why nobody's getting killed for breaking the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. He's just allowing us to feel their own consequences. Your body goes without rest, without spiritual reju rejuvenation, and then you wonder why so many people are dying from these pestilences and stuff. Mm -hmm. Your body needs that rest mm -hmm. and that spiritual healing that we only get on the Sabbath day, new moon day, feast days, and as such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, he don't have to punish us. We punish ourselves. Right. His law is inflexible and unchangeable. Look at verse 31. Interpret my teachings justly. Do not think that my spirit is happy to see your sufferings on the earth. Talking about all of these things, you know, it ain't him that's bringing his pain. Mm -hmm. He's bringing his solution. The solution is the law. Mm -hmm. That's the instructions for surviving this. Mm -hmm. right? So if we reject this, we bring the pain on ourselves. Yes. Like I said, mm -hmm. you don't have to punish us. The punishment is coming. He, he gave us the way out of it. And to reject that is to say, you know, you're welcome. That punishment, and there's scripture in here that tells you that fact. I'm gonna believe I have to find some of these scriptures. I can maybe pull them up on the screen, which mm -hmm. says that those who will never um, um, turn toward obedience to the law will be those who will get the worst parts of the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe it. We may even end up in a lake of fire. You better be careful. 37 says, My law is simple. It always indicates the way which you should follow. Trust in me, I am the way which will lead you to the white city, the promised land, which has its doors open awaiting your arrival. So his law is the path. His law is the instruction. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we have to understand, right, that when we keep talking about this law, we're actually talking about the covenant. We probably should have talked about this at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's just do that now. Um, we have to give Malachi credit for understanding what the law is at all right you know this is the biggest problem with these religions is like it says they have rejected the law and created their own religion well one of the ways that they are able to do this and get past the average person is to say that we can't keep the law because it has so many rules that are not applicable right right mm -hmm. you know we we talked about you know that what is it uh law 613 where you know that ram bam dude went in and pulled out all of these different biblical rules well, those aren't the law. Mm -hmm. You see right here in verse 4, it tells us specifically what the law is, mm -hmm. right? And like I said, this is where we understand that the law is not all of the Bible. There are no dietary rules in the law. Right. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. So you see right here that he's he's telling us the law. You see it says law of Moses, mm -hmm. right? He didn't say law of Ezekiel or law of Daniel or law of Solomon or, you know, this is the law of Moses mm -hmm. uh, or the law given to Moses, his servant. And then it says right here that he commanded at Horeb. Mm -hmm. So this right here would not include all of the rules that was given to Moses. Right. Because not all of the rules were given to him them at Horeb. Right. Only a very specific set of rules were given at Horeb. Mm -hmm. And these rules right here were given to Israel. And it included the commandments. It included the statutes and the judgments. Well, when we come and we start looking for this word Horeb, we find that it was the same mountain that Moses spoke with the burning bush, or the burning bush talked to him. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out this Horeb is the same as Mount Sinai. And where they was, when you start reading in Exodus chapter 19, I believe it is, you start hearing about them at the base of this mountain. Right. Well, if we come back over here to Exodus chapter 20, we start to see the commandment. 
Right. Right. Those are the commands he was talking about. Mm -hmm. In chapter 21 and chapter 22, we start to see the judgments. So we have the commandments and the judgments. Right. And then in chapter 23, we start to see the statutes down there in about verse 14. Right. right. So this is the law. Mm -hmm. So when anybody tell you that you can't keep the law, what they're telling you is that you can't obey the rules that we find in Exodus chapter 20 through 23. Mm -hmm. yeah. Matter of fact, let me show you 24 verse 7. Because this is actually how the Father led me to this, this one verse. Um, was the seal I you know had some hints and some other stuff but when this verse sunk into me that yeah this is the book of the covenant mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and so this is what the song is saying when he says return to the covenant it is these rules Exodus chapter 20 I repeat it because we got to get in these rules this is important stuff here yeah Ex we don't right. we don't want to be like our forefathers um, who turned around and said Oh, we can't, we don't want to hear the voice of God. We just want to listen to you. And that always goes back, you know, to the way that we are now. The Third Testament tells us that the voice of Father is the law. So essentially they were saying, we don't want to hear the law. You tell us what it says. Um, the same thing that we're doing today. We don't want to hear the law. It's too difficult. But if the Father was sitting there saying, I bless you with this. And I bless, I guarantee you we would have stood there. Thunderstorms, shout loud shouts, rain, snow, sleet, hail. We would have been just like the post office. Well, not the post office today, but we would we would have stood there. But when he's he's telling us rules and instructions and judgments and statutes that we need to live everyday life, now all of a sudden we don't want to hear this loud. It's too loud for our ears. Yeah. yeah, and you know there's a variety of people watching this, but I'm afraid some of the people watching this video are actually guilty of what you're saying. Instead of going to their Bible and actually reading the covenant, they're going to come over here and listen to a coach and fight talk about it. Yeah. That's the same thing that they did. They said, you know, I don't want to hear it straight from the word. I'd rather have, you know. Something. Well, yeah, don't do that. I, I did that. You know, you know, you would always say, go read it for yourself. And I was like, well, you know, my pastor said this or I, I, I got this from this spiritual leader. But once I started reading it for myself. Um, and you get details come yeah, out. Yeah, you, now history. you get to see it straight from the source. The source. I was gonna say the horse's mouth, but that was. <laughs> I like my word better. Yeah, we'll get it straight from the source. Uh, from the so, pure fountain of water, and it's really the only thing. So you know, and that, and that should be noted, guys. I've been you know preaching to you for many years now, but you have to understand what I have been preaching. Obedience to the law. You can go back to my very first video on my channel. It's about idolatry and, and yeah, the second commandment, probably the most vicious of all of the lies of all is that we can break the second commandment at will and not be punished for it. Matter of fact, let me show you that because like I said, it is the most vicious. What's the other word um, that they use? Egregious. It's the most egregious lie of them all. Because after you see here that he tells us don't be making images or likenesses of anything that he's created. He goes on to say, verse 6, read that. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So right after he talks about idolatry, he goes on to say that there's thousands of people that love him and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. The problem with this is that he was talking to two million people. So he's talking to two million people who says that there are only going to be thousands that obey him. Mm -hmm. Well, you look around the world now, there's seven million people. How many people are actually keeping the second commandment? I mean, you're on YouTube. If you spend a lot of time on YouTube like I do, it's like the whole world is inundated by idolatry. It's like that's all we do, YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go on. This verse 36 says, law is not complicated nor difficult. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do, like I said, Exodus chapter 20 through 24. I think what's so great about it is that, you know, even when you start out having a, a willing spirit, a willing heart to say, okay, I'm going to keep the law. I'm going to follow Exodus 20 through 23. And the thing about it is you have these guardian angels. You have all these spirits around you that will be working with you to help you. You're not doing yeah. it by yourself. You know, I could, we could we could never do it by ourselves. And I'm not saying we own, own it 100. But the efforts that we put forth to, toward it, you could feel that you have help from um, 
Well, let me show you who it is. Spiritual right help. Here. There yeah. it is right there. In the law, 23 verse 20 says that he will send the angel, the covenant angel to help you. Keep you on the way, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we're not, like you say, we're not expected to do this on our own. Right. We gotta try to prepare ourselves and do the best we can, but we mm -hmm. do have help. Mm -hmm. He sends this angel that's gonna help us from the inside, speaking to us from our consciousness. Yeah, just imagine we have all these, um, these helpers we have the 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 we have wisdom we have the angels we have our guardian angels we have uh the virgins we have yeah we have the law we have the father himself we have the messiah being a mediator we have all this help and we're rejecting it yeah and we're rejecting it because uh, calling ourselves churchy calling ourselves the reverend pastor deacon dr doug <laughs> anyway ready to check out jeremiah chapter 14 uh, 14 through 16 see what happens to those guys but anyway you said you had something down here verse 40 verse 40 says remember that only I am your salvation in times past present and yet to come my law was is and will be the road and the guide of your spirit yeah so that's, the that's, law is, is is what guides our spirit yeah so you're rejecting your own spirit you're rejecting your conscience yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or or leading your spirit astray because mm -hmm. it says it's the guide for your spirit so mm -hmm. if you're rejecting this guide then mm -hmm. what are you doing to your spirit right that's a very deep thought and you know we're gonna end it right there unless you got something else mm -hmm. well we know you're busy and you know we appreciate you spending this time with us stacy um so i just want to end it by saying that you know for those who don't have a copy of the third testament like you, you always give the information down in your show notes below um and i was just looking on amazon where it's seems to be that they have restocked the third testament and also that we have um, brother israel who has the hardback copies but you know i'll yeah, just say yeah. get the third testament um learn the about that copy if you can yeah learn about the spirit and truth get into the third testament guys and don't be um dismayed by those who are actually who seems to be trying to turn you away turn you away as if you know there are no other books and i think that they're just trying to keep us from knowing this truth the spirit and truth and i'm a i'm a very big advocate of learning the third testament so there you go there's my part yeah. and shalom come back to the covenant jacob yeah. come back to the covenant uh. in times Okay, you took it too far. Come back to the covenant, Jacob. You spoiled, you used to be royal. The judges, they cover their faces. You fell in the hands of the wicked. Will you ever ask for forgiveness? It's such a tragedy, isn't it? Don't you remember them days? Back when the tribes were solid and none of the brothers had feminine ways. You had a temple in place. Back then, you was Levitical. Why did you give it away? Just for a whip and a chain. We wasn't meant to be slaves. Your brother is still at your head. He never forgot what you did. He wishes the blessing was his. Look in your rearview mirror. You see them red and blue lights. Sir, where you headed tonight? Keep calm. Hands on the wheel. This could be the end of your life. Gun in your face. Never read you your rights. What is this? Come back to the covenant, Jacob. Uh. Come back to the covenant, Jacob. We wasn't meant to be slaves. Mentally slaves, wake out of slumber, Jerusalem. 144, suiting up. 12 tribes, suiting up. Really, what harm can they do to us? Except kill a body my soul is in, and that's all they can do, but I'm noticing. Faith was the cure to my hopelessness, so I picked up my cross and I'm toting it. 
demons on me, here we go again. They just doing their job, I take no offense. I'm just gonna plead the blood and cast them out to the abyss. I can't believe we alive. I would keep letting us slide. Y'all should roll on the rise. We gon' do better this time. I would willing. Get back to the covenant, Jacob. You was a royal priest. Why would you wanna be basic? The judges, they cover their faces. You fell in the hands of the wicked. Will you ever ask for forgiveness? It's such a tragedy, isn't it? Back to 